Good morning. I wasn't waiting, I was just standing here looking at your beautiful faces. Welcome to church this morning. We're glad to have you here. Some new faces to me, but we're glad to have you here uh, as we celebrate today and memory, um, remember many important things as well. Uh, we're glad that you could be here. We have young ones in the house. I've asked them if they want to tell the story. No, they want me to tell the story. Uh, and someone says, I wished I could be young again. If you want to, come on up for the children's story, no matter what your age may be. Uh, we do want to remind you that next two weeks from this day, there will be one service at Guestwood Camp. Okay, that's June 4th. There will not, there will not, there will not be a service here in case you show up and wonder where everybody is. Everybody will be at Guestwood. If you plan on attending, please be sure to sign up today. Today is the last day that we want you to sign up for that. And if you want to carpool, let somebody know. Let somebody know uh, there's a way that we can carpool and get out to Guestwood very easily. And so we do want to remind you of that. Be sure to bring a lawn chair, a hat, some sunscreen, and walking shoes. Prayerfully, it won't rain, so you won't need an umbrella, but uh, it's going to be a great day, so please plan for that as well. So we do have people from all over. Uh, who thinks they're the furthest in coming to church today? Oh, well, no, you've been here for a while. <laughs> nice try. How far? Colchester is what, 40 kilometers away from... Palm, I know he lives in Palm, but he, anyway, you knew what I meant. Anybody who traveled today to come the furthest? Yes. London. Okay. Burlington. Oops, the Burlington. You know what I love about Canada and Ontario? I brag to people, you know, I went to London and Paris for the weekend. <laughs> wow, you're rich. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But God is so good to us, and we're glad. Uh, yes, remember the coins for kids. Uh, if you're going to make a check out, don't make it out to the church. Please make sure that it's made appropriately so it gets to the right place. Welcome those who are online, seeing there's so many in the house. Get ready, Malcolm. We're going to turn and wave at the camera to all those who are watching us online. If you would do that at this time, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have such a full service today, uh, much going on, so we want to make sure we get as much done as possible. Uh, and the preacher, if he realizes he doesn't have enough time for the full sermon, we'll just do a part two of coming. So don't worry, we're not going to keep you here too late, because uh, we know everybody has something they need to do. We do want to remind you our call to worship this morning our God reigns. Robed with majesty and armed with strength, God holds our world and our lives securely. This is the God to whom we have given our lives, the God who deserves our worship and praise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have brought us safely here this morning to worship you. We thank you that we can remember all the good things you have done in our lives and the blessing on those who also will remember because of the good that they have brought into our lives. So we pray as we worship you today that our hearts will be filled with your presence through your Holy Spirit, that our lives will be changed because we have learned a little more about you and a little more about why we should trust you and give our lives into your hands. So bless us as we worship you today, bless every aspect of this service, may it all be to your name's honor and glory. And we pray these things in the name of the one who has taught us how to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We want to invite you to stand as we sing our opening song this morning. I was there to hear your morning cry. 
cry. In case you're wondering, don't take me off yet. In case you're wondering, there's no spelling mistake. Borning is a word, giving birth. So in case you're wondering if somebody misspelled it from morning cry, borning cry. So today, we are receiving the orange handwoven antipendium and stole, which was created by Norma Kamen. This completes the full range of colors that we use throughout the year. In case you don't remember, Norma Kamen was an amazing master weaver, still is, and she has made all of the antipendium stoles and stoles for the church. You may remember when she was an in integral part of the congregation and we're honored that she completed this collection, even though she now lives out west. If you want to turn to the back corner of the right there, on your right, this is now the Jesus Loved Loves Me stained glass hanging. Uh, it's going to be above that door, as you see, it was in remembrance of Bertha Hinshaw. Right now the lights aren't working for it, but that's being worked on. But we do remember Bertha Hinshaw with this hanging and a plaque is also put beside the hanging for you to see as well. Now many of you are here today because we're also going to dedicate the memorial bricks for individuals. Um, the weather has not been the nicest to us to put them properly in the ground, but they are outside, you'll be able to see them after the service. Uh, we do remember these people very clearly in our lives and the bricks are a memorial to that. So I shall read who's and what the bricks will say. Patrick L. Malosh, love forever in your family. Phyllis Ramsey, an inspiration. Albert Hinton, 1931 to 2022, forever in our hearts. Reverend Don and Angie Hansford, God is love. John Douglas Braithwaite, forever in our hearts. 
jo uh, in memoriam, in mem ah, sorry, in memory of Julia Keta McMorning, 1935 to 2020. Jean Corner Dearly, loved founding member, 1929. Jacob and Ruth Willis, loved, missed. Glenn Ward, 1964 to 2021. Hicks family, Hartford family, pray for peace. Marion Westlake, always in our hearts. Dr. John Fry, B. 1923, D. 2021. Louise Fry, B. 1929, D. 2022. Forever loved. Rhoda and Jim Thompson. Missing you, water duck. Brian Thorpe, 1948 to 2020. Jane Angus, faithful member. 2401-1918 to 0203-2020. Betty Ugama, because he lives. These are being dedicated so we can remember those who gave their lives in peace to us, who loved us and cared for us, and we remember them as they have passed away now. But their thoughts will be thoughts for us their hearts will remind us of God's love, and we want to remember them, especially today, as we memorialize and dedicate these stones. Do we have any young children in the house? Yes? Come on up. Come on up. Do you see what is on my hand? Yes. What is it? An elastic. An elastic, a rubber band. Sometimes people do that to remember something. They put the elastic on their hand to remind them that they have to do something. Now the problem for some of us is we'll put this on and then forget why we put it on. <laughs> so it just becomes a lovely ring or what have you. Back in the Old Testament, there were times when God would do something special for his children. God loved these people and he would do so many miracles. And oftentimes when he did a miracle in a certain spot, they would put stones up to remind them of what God did. So today you just heard me read a whole list of stones or bricks that we use as memorial bricks to remind us of people that we loved. What's that? A rock is like a stone. That doesn't help you either. Right. Okay. So you put them up to remind you. So every time when the children of Israel will pass that area, somebody will say, why are these stones or rocks here? They say, that's because God did this for us. God did that for us. So it reminded them of what God had done in their lives. Now for us, we may not have stones to put up, but whenever God does something special for you, do something to remind you of that. Especially if he answers a prayer, do something to remind you of that. Because sometimes we forget. And sometimes we think, oh, God doesn't care about me. But if we remember what he has done, then life is much better, much happier. So think about that. Next time something special happens, do something to remind you of that. Now I want you to do one other thing. I want you to remember... When mommy and daddy do something special for you. When they do something for you, special, remember that and thank them. Thank them. Thank them. Did I say thank them? Yes, because it's so nice to remember when your parents do something special for you or your grandparents do something special for you. So we remember God loves us. He has done so many special things for us. Is that how you say thank you? <laughs> Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you love us so and you remind us of this in many ways. We pray that you will help us to remember your goodness, that we'll remember answered prayer, that we'll remember that Jesus loves us. So especially for these young children, as they continue to grow, may they continue to know and learn and remember how good God is. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, guys. You can go with Anthony again. I don't know about you, but have you ever gone into a room and forgotten why you went into the room? <laughs> All the time. My brother says when he gets down on his knees, he stays there and makes sure he gets everything he can while he's there. <laughs> so that when he gets up, he doesn't have to worry about it. So in line with that, remembering, God asks us very little. He asks very little of us. And one of the things he says, I want you to return to me something of what I've given to you. And he reminds us it is good when we do that. When we give back to God from his blessings, we are more blessed. And he, for tithe, he says 10%. 10% is nothing compared to how God has blessed us. So remember to return tithe and offerings to God because it blesses the ministries of this church. It blesses every aspect of what is done here so that you can have a building that has heat a projector that works. <laughs> You're blessed because God has blessed you. So remember to bless others and give back to the church and to God. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you bless the offerings that have been returned. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to give back, meaning you have already blessed us. So please use them to your name's honor and glory. May they be used for the ministries of this church, for every aspect of the work that you will do through this church. And we pray that your spirit will continue to bless us as we strive to be like you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning's reading is Psalm 47. Clap your hands for joy, all peoples. Praise God with loud song. The Lord, the Most High, is to be feared. He is a great king, ruling over all the world. 
He gave us victory over the peoples. He made us rule over other nations. He chose for us the land where we live, the proud possession of his people, whom he loves. God goes up to his throne. There are shouts of joy and the blast of trumpets as the Lord goes up. Sing praise to God. Sing praise to our king. God is king over all the world. Praise him with song. God sits on his sacred throne. He rules over the nations. The rulers of the nations assemble with the people of the God of Abraham. More powerful than all the armies is he. He rules supreme. The word of the Lord. Thank you. So last Thursday, as you know, was Ascension Thursday, which reminds us that Jesus was taken up into heaven. Our topic today is going to be somewhat on that, but again, time constraints we want to make sure. Uh, the title of our sermon today is Wait for It. Jesus said, I did not tell you these things at the beginning, for I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me where I am going. And now that I have told you, your hearts are full of sadness. In preparing the disciples for his ultimate leaving of them, Jesus tried to let them know what was going to happen. The amazing thing about our God is he never has anything happen without letting us know. Throughout the Bible, God always forewarned the people of what was going to happen. Through the prophets, through the judges, he would let them know, if you do this, everything will be fine. If you don't, there are going to be problems. And this is what is going to happen, and this is what is going to happen. So when Jesus was explaining to them that he was going to leave them, they were a little saddened in their hearts. But he continued to say, but I'm telling you the truth, it is better for you that I go away. Because if I do not go, the helper will not come to you. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in the Greek, I will send you another comforter, just like me. We know that when Jesus was on earth, he could only be in one place at one time. But he promised them, I will send you a comforter that will be with you wherever you are. And that was a promise for the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he will prove to the world, to the people of the world, that they are wrong about sin, and about what is right, and about God's judgment. So Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to do some things for you. He will prove to the people of the world that they are wrong about sin. How can people be wrong about sin? Well, there's nothing wrong in the world. Whatever you do is okay. I'm fine. I'm good enough. I don't need God. That's wrong. <laughs> That's wrong. God says he's going to teach them about the world, what is wrong about sin, and about what is right. God tells us what is right to do. God directs us to do what is right. And then also about God's judgment. Now this is probably one of the toughest things to think about, that God is going to judge you. But you know the amazing thing to me about God's judgment, God essentially is trying to prove himself. God is trying to prove that all along he has loved you, all along he has been merciful to you, all along he's wanted what was best for you. That is God's judgment. Think about it, when Adam and Eve sinned, God was going to judge them because they had done wrong, because they had sinned. But what did Jesus do? Jesus came looking for Adam and Eve and says, hey, where are you guys? Where are you guys? Well, we're hiding. Why are you hiding? Because we're naked. Well, who told you you were naked? If God was such a judgmental God that we try to paint a picture of, he would have killed Adam and Eve right away. No problems. And started all over again. But God is merciful, people. God loves us more than anything else. He still, however, has a standard. So that's why he has to prove to the world that his standard is what is best. 
He has to prove to the world that he is full of mercy and grace. They are wrong about sin because they do not believe in me, Jesus says. They choose not to believe in God. That's a problem. Because how can you live in a world like this expecting anything worthwhile without a God? So there are people who live their whole lives saying there's no such thing as God. They believe in the sun. Some will worship the sun. What has the sun done for you lately? Remember that song? Yeah, that's not what it said. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? The sun God made to keep us warm. God made to help the grass grow, the trees grow, to give life. The wind God gave to us. Some people say, well, we never see God. So you ask the question, have you ever seen the wind? Anybody ever seen the wind? No. But we see the effects of the wind. We see it blowing this and that about. We feel it. You may not see God, but please remember he is always there. They are wrong about what is right. If it feels good, do it. Doesn't mean it's right. Then Jesus says, because I'm going to the Father and you will not see me anymore. You will not see me anymore. What pain that brought to the disciples' hearts. The one they had loved for three some years was going to leave them. In the same way we feel that pain when we're separated from our loved ones. When they pass away we are pained because we're no longer able to interact with them. Then he says, and they are wrong about judgment because the ruler of this world has already been judged. We think that God is out to judge us. As I said a little earlier, God is proving that he is merciful, but he's going to ultimately judge the devil. Because the devil is one who brought sin into this world. The devil is the one who continues to make this world not get any better. There's no utopia happening on this earth, my friends. I'm not really a fatalist, but this world is not. Did I say not? This world is not going to get any better. Until Jesus comes, it's only going to get worse. And I am not sad about that, because the worse it gets, the closer it gets to his return. This is where one of you can say amen. Okay, go ahead. I don't want to kill you now. This is once in a while. Once in a while. So they are wrong about judgment, because the devil has already been judged. His life is over. He just doesn't know it yet. He is not going to win, but he will keep trying. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeping, seeking whom he's going to devour. He's lost, but he doesn't know it yet. God reminds us of that. Then Jesus says, I have much to tell you, but now it would be too much for you to bear. Can you imagine your child at uh, two years old? Did you guys, let me share this story with you. So this child came home, fifth grader, and said to their mommy, Mommy, our teacher told us today how we make children. What? What? Oh, mommy got so angry. That's my job. She goes to the teacher and she's ready to scream and yell. And then the mother said, let me, let me, let me do this. What do you mean? How did the teacher tell you how to make children? Oh, it's simple. Just add R-E-N. <laughs> simple. So we find that we are in a world that's not getting any better. And we're not understanding things and we, we tend to forget who God is and what is really important. So we find ourselves in situations where we question God. Sometimes we're not ready to hear what God has to tell us. Sometimes we're not ready to hear the story. So that's why in the Bible, there are things that are written that we may not be able to read yet or understand yet. Or we may have read before, but it didn't make any sense until that moment. Aha! 
I get it now, God. He thus says, when however the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God, he will lead you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak of what he hears and will tell you of things to come. The Holy Spirit, we know, inspired the Bible. We know that it was through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that men wrote the Bible to tell us of things that were happening then, things that will be happening in the future, and ultimately what will be the end story. He will give me glory, Jesus says, because he will take what I say and tell it to you. That's a promise that God gives us. All that my Father has is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will take what I gave him, give him, and tell it to you. So this happened before the death of Jesus. And we are told that oftentimes Jesus would pray for his disciples. And some even say Jesus is praying for us now. That's where he is, in the most holy place in the sanctuary in heaven, according to the scriptures. And he continues to pray for us. Does God want to save you? Does God want to save you? Yes, he does. And he will do everything in his power to save you. Except he will never force you. He will never force you to follow him or serve him. But he will do whatever he can to save you. That's been a prayer of mine for decades now. And I tell you what, when you pray a prayer like that, God will sometimes slap you upside your head to answer your prayer. <laughs> he will get your attention and say, you, you asked me to do this. So we know that Jesus died and we know that he resurrected. And the Bible says for 40 days after his death, he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him. And he talked with them about the kingdom of God. I can only imagine the conversations that Jesus had with the disciples. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can only imagine how they would ask questions and he would try to help them understand again what was going to happen. I can only imagine that there were things that we think that were changed at the cross. I'm going to say that again. There are things that we think that were changed at the cross. And Jesus said nothing about it for 40 days. I think if God wanted to change stuff for 40 days, Jesus would have said, listen guys, okay, so from now on, this is what you're going to do. Okay guys, listen, I nailed all the commandments to the cross, so you do whatever you want to do, I love you no matter what you do. He would have said that. But he never said anything like that, because God never changes. What God tried to do for those 40 days, what Jesus tried to do was to help them to be ready for what was coming. To help them to be ready for the mission that he was going to give them. To help them to be ready to do what he had them to do. And when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift you're about. I told you about. The gift my father promised. What a special offering Jesus made. He told them when he leaves, another comforter would come. So wait for it, Jesus says. Wait in Jerusalem until he comes. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They asked him a question. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel. As long as Jesus was with the disciples, they had a wrong understanding of what Jesus was all about. Just like the Jews thought that he would come and make Israel a great nation again, defeat the Roman government and make them great again, that was not the kingdom of God. And we talked about that not too long ago. The fact is, Jesus was reminding them of why he came. The whole purpose of his coming. So it was not to make Israel great again. Jesus said to them, the times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority and is not for you to know when they will be. 
So don't worry about what is going to happen so much. Just make sure you are ready each moment of each day. I am sure there's not a single athlete that gets into the Olympics that waits till the day before to get ready. They wouldn't make it, obviously. But the fact is they train for years in preparation for it. They train for years and still not all of them win. But the fact is that God says if you stay in me, if you stay connected to me, you will be ready. If you die before I come back, you will be ready. If you are alive when I come back, you will be caught up in the clouds, as I promise you. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power. And you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Another thing that the Spirit was going to do was give them the strength to share the good news. That's what God wanted them to do. This is not just for you. Share the good news. Tell somebody how good God has been to you. Tell somebody what God has done in your life. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to be witnesses for me, Jesus says, in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria unto the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven, and as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Wait, wh wh where are you going, Jesus? Had Jesus not warned them this was going to happen? Sometimes when things happen for us, we wonder why. I believe sometimes God warns us if, 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 if that's going to happen. But the fact is, he lets us know that no matter what may happen, if we stay connected to him, it will be okay. It will be all right. So as he's taken up into the clouds, they're standing there in awe and wondering at what's going on. They're following, trying to find Jesus. When two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking at the sky? Try this sometime. Go downtown, Windsor, and just stand there and look up at the sky. And you'd be surprised how many people will come next to you and look up at the sky. So they said to, him, why, to them, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. The promise was made at that point to remind us that Jesus said he's coming again. That Jesus said, the same way you see me go, that's how I'll come back. Which helps us to know that don't be fooled if somebody says to you, you know, I think Jesus came back, he's in, in London. I don't know if any of you remember, you're probably too young to remember, in the 80s, wink, wink, in the 80s, uh, there was a, this advertising that Jesus had come to London. And people were flying over to London to see Jesus. I think that was a British Airways thing. They, they got people <laughs> to fly there. But the fact is, it's not going to be a surprise. You're not going to hear about Jesus coming again. In the same manner that he was taken up into the clouds, that's how he's going to come back. Every eye will see him like the lightning flashes from the east to the west. That's how it's going to be. But he prepares us by telling us he will send us the Holy Spirit. So we will spend a few weeks looking at the, what the Holy Spirit will do in our lives. But just to remind you, it will prove to the people of the world that they are wrong about sin. He will show what is right. Praise God, Luke. He will lead us into God's judgment. He will reveal the truth about God. He will lead us into all truth. His word will lead us into all truth. He will tell you of things to come. No surprises there. He will give me glory because he will take what I say and tell it to you. That 
is what the Holy Spirit will do. And there's some who kind of say, well, I have the Spirit, I do this, I do that. That's what we're going to look at to see really what is it that the Holy Spirit wants to bring into our lives. So yes, Jesus ascended. Now he stands before God, reminding God how much he loves us. Reminding God how much he cares for us. Reminding God that his care for us is amazing. So we want to remember, even as the disciples stood watching, wondering what was going on, they would have to remember in the back of their minds the words of Jesus. So sometimes we may have questions about what God is doing, just remember the words of Jesus and trust what he has said that he's going to do. <clears throat> Why stand ye gazing there up into the sky? Be not discouraged for we have brought good news this same Jesus whom we do magnify soon he will come again for all to glorify Lord, I humble is coming again. Cheer up, be pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. We can be so full of hope, knowing that he's coming again. Wars wherever they are, trouble wherever they are, 
mass shootings wherever they are, the ugliness that this world is giving us, please remember, Jesus is coming again. And don't lose hope, ever. Don't lose hope. Let us, hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you so much that you have reminded us that no matter what this world throws at us, that you are coming again. No matter how ugly this world may get, you are coming back to take us home. We pray, Father, that you will help us to trust those words, that we will live according to your will in our lives. You have promised that when Jesus comes again, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we always be with our Lord. So let these words encourage us. May the ascension of Christ remind us that we will have that opportunity by his grace to go home with him. So we pray that you'll strengthen us, strengthen our resolve to serve you and to follow you every day of our lives. We pray for the people, the members of this congregation, those who are visiting with us today. We pray that you will bless each heart to hear your voice, to trust your voice, and to remind it how good you are to us and how much you want a relationship with you and with us. Father, we pray that you'll help us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus knowing that without him we can do nothing. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and how it speaks to our hearts and helps us to trust and learn about God even more each day. We want to remember Christine Fullerton, Gail Grandin, John Pecuda, Jeff Perry, Ralph Sanstedt, Eleanor Subhani, Edith Tyson, Kay Christie. We pray that you'll keep your loving arms wrapped around them as they continue to get better. We pray that you'll bless them to know how much they're loved and cared for you. And may we be your hands and feet, eyes and mouths to encourage and uplift them. We pray for the leadership of our country. We know again that you have the power to change things, but you allow us as human beings to make in choices, important choices. And may we always look for ways to improve and make things right where we live in this community. We ask, Father, that you'll bless the Riverside United Church, the new minister that is coming on board in September. Prepare he and his family for the work that will be here for him. We pray that you will bless the church to accept and love him in and that by your grace so many great things will be done from this church, for this community, and for Windsor. We pray, Father, that you will help us, help us to keep our eyes fixed on the truth because we're told when we see the truth, the truth will set us free. So let us remember the truth that you love us, you care for us, the truth that you will forgive us of our sins, the truth that you have a standard that you want us to follow, and the truth is that when you come again, we can be ready to go home with you. So keep us in your care, Father. Watch over us. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand as we sing our song, Because He Lives.
So we hope this week that you will take God's grace and mercy and share it with others, that you will remember through the Holy Spirit that truth always will win over, and the fact is that we can be excited and bring the kingdom of God into our experience as we follow and serve him each day. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen.